So both Google Pixel 7 and 7 Pro are gonna be pretty good Android phones and although there are a lot of differences among them, they share a similar chipset, the Tensor G2. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything we know about this chip. First off, it's made by Samsung on its 4 nanometer node. This likely won't have much impact on the chip's performance but will definitely make it more efficient. It is almost certain that the Tensor G2 will maintain the same 2 plus 2 plus 4 core cluster configuration as the original Tensor. Which is still unique, Google's approach hasn't been adopted by other chipset makers thus far. It consists of 2 super big cores, 2 more big cores and 4 small cores. The G2's smaller cores are still Cortex-A55 similar to the original Tensor according to the Geekbench findings. And guess what, even the rest of the cores are similar to its predecessor with ARM Cortex-X1 for its super big cores and A76 for its big cores. So what's changed then? Well, it's the frequency. At 2.35 GHz, the A76 cluster is 100 MHz faster and the X1 cluster now operates at 2.85 GHz after receiving a 50 MHz frequency boost. So while the competitors are using Cortex-X2 powerhouse CPU cores along with Cortex-A710 and A510, Google seems to fall behind. This can further be corroborated with the latest benchmark scores whereby the Geekbench measures the single core point at 1054 and the multi-core at 3138. So you can clearly tell there's not a drastic improvement in terms of CPU performance. But that's how Google does it. Google has experience with this setup for a whole generation, making it simpler to further optimize the system and they believe in optimizing rather than unnecessary performance. That doesn't mean there's no performance gains. It looks like Google is significantly upgrading the GPU. Instead of the G78 GPU, the Mali G710 GPU is mentioned in the Geekbench results. That ought to result in performance and efficiency improvement of roughly 20%. Also the onboard TPU, which focuses on machine learning, is expected to have a 35% improvement in operations that may leverage the new GPU. The Antutu reveals a score of 800K, which if compared to the Snapdragon processor is right around Snapdragon 888 or the Plus variant. So it's not gonna compete with the top dogs, but is it really required to do so? Flagship phones these days have more power than the average user needs. So I don't think most users would even notice the difference in performance. And the performance is not the only aspect here. There are things like speech recognition, translation, fancy camera features, AR, VR and other highly specialized workflows in which Google has a massive lead. We haven't got any idea about Google's dedicated security core and separate image processing hardware, but this will most definitely be a part of the chipset. So to conclude, it's clear that the Tensor G2 will not be a huge leap in performance and chip design, but it will offer much better AI support, better thermals and overall use less power. So that's it, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it, catch you in the next one, peace out.